If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This is another of our popular Listener's Choice interviews, which we're playing over the weekend. We've chosen the most popular interviews for you to select the Listener's Choice winner. If you're not sure how the Listener's Choice competition works, have a look at horsechats.com slash choice for the rules and the leaderboard. Horse welfare and safety are of utmost importance where humans have any interaction with horses. Within the courses at International Horse College, we only utilise methods that promote safe and humane ways of interaction between horses and humans. We only support safe methods of educating riders, handlers and trainers about horse welfare. Internationalhorsecollege.com, registered training organisation 31352. Today's guest at Horse Chats is Alicia Evans. Alicia's been a guest before on number 462, putting relationships with horses before riding. So we're going to talk to her again. And this time we're going to talk about 10 things you must do before you start to train your horse to have the best communication with them. Now, Alicia, you there? How are you today? I'm here. I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for asking. Good. Look, Alicia, I'm really looking forward to you. And when I was reading through the notes that you'd sent over, and the first one is breathe, I just went, oh, yes, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. I'm, oh, I just thought, well, I have to tell you that, you know, just sort of something that every time I hear your name now, I'm just going to think, yep, breathe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alicia, these points, why did you why did you choose these ones? I know that your relationship with your horse is very important to you. But tell us why this particular subject. Well, from what I found um, being a horse person, a horse guardian myself for the last 18 years, and also being an animal communicator and a healer, it's really tuned me in to a very different perspective of horses from their perspective. So I grew up riding and I grew up with trainers, you know, telling me what to do and how to do it. But what's really, really interesting is I never had one trainer that actually had me connect with the horse before I rode it. They had me brush it. They had me pick its feet, but they never had me connect with this being whose back I was going to be on, Mm. you know, who Mm. is its own being, who has its own thoughts, its own feelings. And the reality is they never connected me with the being whose back I was being given the opportunity to climb up on. Mm, mm, okay. And I thought that that was, you know, as I, as I learned later, pretty much directly from the horses of what is their truth, it really kind of opened my eyes and I was like, my gosh, you know, I can't believe how much we teach little kids about the outside of horses. And, you know, we let them form connections with them, but we really don't teach about the inside of who and what a horse is about. And then we ask them to do all kinds of things and we train them to do all kinds of things. And, you know, it's different. Like with a dog, I mean, you're never getting on your dog's back, right? Mm -hmm. And when you think about a horse, it's like you've got a flight animal. So I'll never forget I was at the barn one day and I lifted up a horse's foot and I just thought to myself, oh, my God, this is a flight animal. He's actually giving me his foot. Like there's an enormous level for me, of sacredness in that and an enormous level of respect that I just started becoming aware that I must have. Yeah. Because this is not just a being that like, oh, I show up at the barn and I'm like, hey, we're putting a saddle on, I'm putting a bridle in your mouth. Okay, let's go ride and you do what I want. That's not, you know, anybody doing that, that's not fair to the horse. Mm-hmm. There is there's a lot of focus on let's go, let's get riding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like agendas, right? Yes. My agenda. You have to fit my agenda, even though I'm going to ride on your back because it's something that I want to do. And so the horse really, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, the horse wasn't part of the relationship. Mm-hmm. And that made me very, very aware because I watched, you know, horses get hurt. I watched people get hurt. And I was like, wow, all I don't want to say all of it, but so much of this can be avoided 
if we do these 10 things before we even start training or riding or just being in yeah. connection with our horse. And, you know, from my perspective and just having communicated with a lot of horses and asking them directly through animal communication, it's, you know, we have to start looking at this as more of like a partnership, not like I'm the boss and I say what you do. You're getting on the back of a sentient being who has a life who honestly, if they were in the wild, they would not need you, <laughs> mm. right? Mm. So it's more like a privilege. It's not a right. And yes. so as I started approaching horses differently myself and just started seeing how they were responding, you know, and, and working with clients when there were issues, working from this, you know, from these 10 things, so much stuff shifted. And it wasn't just the quality of, the ride, it was the quality of the connection. Mm -hmm. And I really, as an advocate for those who don't have a voice, you know, I will always speak the truth that they have shown me from their perspective. And I feel like these 10 things almost need to be, you know, like you have like the 10 commandments in the Bible kind of thing, you yes. know, to, a, a way according to live your life. And I'm not saying I read the Bible or you know, I'm, I'm a follower of it, but it set up a, a set of rules, a code of conduct. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think that these 10 things really do. It sets up a new code of conduct that across the board, there's not one person on the planet that's not capable of doing these things, except that there's not one person or horse on the planet that would not benefit from starting with this as a foundation before they even start interacting with their horse. Yeah. So Alicia, can we start with the first one, which is breathe? We forget to, don't we? We forget to breathe. Oh, all the time. Yeah. You know what was one of the most interesting things that I learned from the horses themselves? They said to me, do you know how many people are afraid of horses that ride? Mm. And I was like, what do you mean? And they said, we are much bigger than you humans, and many of you carry a fear. You love to ride us, but you're breathing from your chest, not from your belly, because, you know, you're, you're wondering, what are we going to do next, right? Mm -hmm. So when they said that, I just was kind of blown away because, you know what? I'd never thought about it. I'd never thought about it before. And when they said that, I was like, oh my goodness, that makes so much sense. So when we are breathing around our horses, most of us are breathing shallow, like in our chest area. And what that does is it activates fight or flight. Well, when you're around a prey animal <laughs> that is, is kind of always scanning the horizon, right, for fear or for predators or, you know, what could be coming, yeah. and your own body is in fear, you're already starting your relationship in a tense way because the horse is like, you know, you're breathing shallow. So no matter what you say, if you tell me to be calm or not, you're not calm. So I don't trust what you're saying. But as soon as they get people breathing into their belly before they even start, because the belly breathing actually activates the, the parasympathetic nervous system or that sense of calm and relaxation, your horse doesn't believe what you say say your horse believes who you're being so yes. if you're breathing into your chest you're being on guard if you're breathing into your belly you're being calm yes. and horses don't like i said they don't function just by what you say they function by what what's happening in your own body and most of us don't even realize that we're not breathing or we're shallow breathing, especially around our horses. Yeah, yeah. So that's the first thing that, you know, people have to do. We have to switch our breathing to our belly, and we have to make sure we're breathing. Because right. one thing happens when you're on your horse, you know, you get a little nervous. You literally, you'll stop breathing for the rest of the ride and wonder, why are my horse and I struggling? Mm -hmm. And then the horse gets blamed for being stubborn, when a human hasn't realized, oh my God, it's me. You know, we rarely look at our side of the range, right? 
Yeah. So he's about the horse. Yes. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that, that breath that I took and forgetting to breathe seems a bit strange because yeah. we can all breathe. We breathe naturally, but forgetting to breathe correctly and deeply and properly. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and remember, though, that it's very easy for our natural, calm, relaxed breathing to kind of go awry, Mm -hmm. and and we can start chest breathing without even realizing it. Like, let's just say you're riding your horse, and you're going over a jump, and your horse stops short, and it just, you know, like Mm. you, like you take that breath in, and you hold it. When you do that for the rest of your ride, and it could be... For, for many more months, it could even be for more years, you actually start breathing from your chest unless you consciously bring that breath back down into your belly and reset it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And most of the time when we have that experience, we take on a non-natural way of breathing as our natural way, yeah. right? It's almost like we're in default mode. Yeah. Yeah. So breathing is 100% like before you even go near your horse, Right. Before you even get in the arena, like you should be breathing before you even come into contact with your horse, because that breath sets up a really powerful energy field between the two of you. And it's either going to be limited or it's going to be expansive, but it Mm -hmm. really does depend on how you are breathing. It's like the energy that you're bringing to your horse. Yeah. The second point that you've got is let go of your past. Can you just explain that a little bit more? Yes. So one of the things, and and all of these kind of like layer on top of each other. So when we're stuck in our chest breathing, right, most of the time we're not getting enough oxygen into our body and we have more carbon dioxide in in our body. It kind of locks us in a pattern of being in our head. So we're constantly going over the past instead of being safe and relaxed in the present. Most people still don't understand the fact yet that horses are actually very telepathic animals. So they literally pick up on the pictures in our head. And when we have a whole bunch of clutter in our head, or we have pictures of what our, did, what our horse did on the last ride, you know, or the last time we did this exercise, then all of a sudden we're bringing the past into the present. Now, if horses are telepathic, you want to be really careful. They're very literal. So the thoughts that you send to them, if you're sending them a picture from they were acting up last time, guess what? It's more likely that they'll be acting up this time if that's the picture you're holding in your head. So it's really important to let go of all the past I'm not saying let go of like the trust that you've built through all of your interactions. I'm just saying let go of the past moment that you were with your horse and be fully, you know, present with a clear mind focused on what you actually want to do today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we've got declutter your mind. As the next one, we've sort of let go of the past, but we've still got the present, haven't we? Everything that's going on right now. Yes, yes. So, you know, I mean, we could show up at the barn and, you know, we had our agenda plan and we're going to go to our horse and we're going to brush them and we're going to do this and then we're going to saddle them. And, and then all of a sudden, like, something could go awry at the barn, right? Somebody was having a problem with their horse. So we had to interrupt our time with our horse to go help somebody with something. So when I say declutter your mind, I just mean whatever is going on right now that you're bringing in your mind to your horse, let it all go. Use your breathing as a way to center yourself and be really present with just you and your horse right here and right now. No distractions, no clutter. If you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look. Horsechats.com. The next one, it sort of follows a logical order then, you know, letting go of the past, decluttering your eye, but softening your body. Yeah. So a lot of times, and this is where um, 
It's very interesting what they said about most people that ride are actually carrying some level of fear. Well, we're in fear, we tighten ourselves, right? We get a little more rigid. When our horse has to pull its neck out because it, or pull it forward, you know, because something's going on with the bit, and then we land up going forward. The softer that we are, the easier it will be to ride with our horse instead of riding on our horse. And I know from experiences that I've had many, many times with riding my own horse, there's a very big difference between riding on or riding with and being mm. in sync yep. with your horse. When you're riding on your horse and your body's stiff and tight, it's not that fun. There's way too much controlling things trying to go on. But if we soften our body, then a horse can soften their body. If we're rigid and tight and we don't even realize it, and this is a prey animal, the first thing they're going to do is start to guard and defend themselves. So they're going to be tight, which could actually create problems and issues for our horses in their bodies. If they're doing something repetitively and they're doing it from a tightened space rather than a soft and relaxed flowing space. So it's really important for us that before we even connect with our horse, before we ever ride, before we ever train, we've got to get into softness with our own self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that, you know, the breathing is so important. You've said it as point number one, but you've got it again here as number five. Breathe again and letting go of your agenda. Yeah. Just because I didn't want to be boring, I could have put breathe as like one through ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, that could have been the whole entire thing. Did, did I say breathe? Oh, did I mention you need to breathe? So the reason why I say breathe again is because when you're breathing first into your belly and then you're letting go of the past, you're decluttering your mind, you're softening your body, right? Then all of a sudden it's like, cool, and then breathe again and let all of that go, mm, right? Mm. Because the first time you're breathing and you're going through like kind of steps one through four, you're still kind of thinking about what you have to do, yep. right? Yep. So I want you to think about what you have to do, let it go, and then take another breath where it can probably go deeper because of the previous four things that you've done. Yes. So, the whole point is to continuously get yourself in a calm, relaxed state so that your horse is not in any way, shape, or form reacting to you, but they're responding to the level of relaxation that you're bringing to your connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and also, too, like when you breathe again this time, it's like just let go of your agenda, right? Because so many times that agenda of like what we're doing, how much time we have, what we have to get done, you know, and especially like too, if people are training horses, you know, they're on a schedule. They've got specific things to do. That's fine. But sometimes you may end up jumping from one to the next to the next to the next because you're trying to follow your agenda and you're not even connecting with the being that's in front of you. And this is where I find that horses have so much of a hard time because the humans aren't even seeing them. Yeah. They're not seeing who that horse is. Mm. They're not connecting. The first thing that horses do with each other when they, when they meet up, they sniff noses, mm. right? They sniff yes. butts, they sniff yep. bodies. First thing they do is connect. Mm. And a lot of the times we really forget this and it's it's massive. It's like this should be the foundation that's taught in every training school, in every 4H you know, across the board, any horse professionals, right? If you're interacting with a horse, there's just a certain code of conduct that we need to start to establish. So we've got safe spaces for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. They just flow on the scent to yourself and be even more present. That's the next tip you've given us. Yeah. So, you know, with each breath you're taking, you're, you know, we humans are very interesting. We do a lot. We accomplish a lot. And it's very scary to me because most people are up in their heads so much that they forget they even have a body, mm. right? And horses, they're the reverse. They're always in their body. 
it's rare unless there's a case of like abuse or trauma or something like that or pain. It's very rare that a horse will ever not truly be centered in who they are, right? And not be centered in their body. But we humans, you know, I watch humans do things and I'm like, you know, you do have a body, right? <laughs> like, you know, you're connected with your body. And again, part of it is because of the breathing in the chest, you know, and we just keep going, 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 going. And it's like, how about come back into your body? So to center yourself and get present, it's just, it's really about becoming aware, especially when you're around your horse, like become aware that you're entering into a sacred relationship of partnership and collaboration with your horse. And that riding on a horse's back, it's not a right. It's Mm. a privilege. Mm -hmm. These animals are so much stronger than we are and could do so much damage if they want to. And God bless them as they watch the myriad of things that they're subjected to and what they put up with, you know? And even if we just take this time, even if if it's like a little bit of a mini meditation, you know what I mean? An open eye meditation to bring us back into that present moment and recognize we're connecting with a living being. Yeah. You know, that's got its own thoughts, its own feelings, its own awareness of its body. And it's really important for us to pay attention to this. It shifts. You know, I never look at riding based on training. I don't care how good a training can be. I know a lot of people that know a lot more than me about the outside of a horse's body. But I can't say I know a ton of people that are that aware of what's actually going on on the inside of that being and what's going on with their soul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that if we can practice these steps, it also brings us back to a place of sacredness. You know, yes. that we're in our own body. Yeah. So. Because you've talked about connecting your horse and um, how can we connect with our horse then through our breathing? Yeah. Because if, it, you know, if you go to ride a horse and you're not connected with your breath, the whole, you know, you're going to feel a little bit of resistance or anxiousness. I mean, remember, horses are naturally, when they feel, they can feel flies 12 inches off their body. Right? Yes. They can probably sense predators from a couple of miles away. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so this is a real sensitive being that we're asking to do a lot of very unnatural things. Right? And they're willing to do it. And I just look at it and I say the least that we could do, the very, very, very least, is to honor the being that's in front of us and be grateful and you know, be aware Yep. because they feel that they, they feel when we're connected with them on that level. And it's sad too, because I see a lot of horses that have literally kind of like vacated their body, mm-hmm. you know, so they're, they're, they're there, but they're not fully there because they've gotten so shut down. You know, they don't even remember who they are. And to me, that's one of the saddest things because a horse is a being that is so connected with itself. What can we do then to tune into the horse, you know, to tune into the horse to become more aware of how they're feeling, what they're experiencing in their body in the present moment? So I'm going to go back to number one and number five, Mm -hmm. breathe. (laughs) Yep, yep. Because what happens too, right, like so when we're really breathing and paying attention to our breathing, we let go of the past, we let go of the clutter, we, we soften our bodies. I don't believe that there's a person on this planet that isn't on some level like psychic or, and now, you know, when I say psychic, most of the time what people will think is, oh, you mentally see pictures, right? Like you can see what's going to happen next Tuesday yeah, or you can yeah. tell me something about myself. But but psychic also means that our receptors, like we could also be very sensitive to how another person's feeling. Like did you ever stand next to somebody and you didn't have a headache before you stood next to them? But then you're standing next to them and you're like, wow, my head hurts, <laughs> right? And it might not have even be your, been yours. They're the one that had the headache. Yeah. Right? So, so as we tune in and we get rid of all this clutter that's, that's preventing us from being fully present with the being that's in front of us, we actually start to get some of our sensations back. 
You know, some of us are really good at we just we heard something, you know, we heard an inner voice that guided us or told us to do something. So animal bodies, what I've found is they're very intelligent, right? You might be standing near your horse and all of a sudden like your right shoulder starts to twinge. You're like, wow, that's really weird. Now, if you had all this clutter in your head, right, if you're still in the past, if you weren't soft in your body, you might think that it was your pain, but it might have been your horse's discomfort, and they're just trying to speak with you in the language that they speak, right, because they can't open their mouth. Like in the U.S., we have these commercials with a chihuahua and Taco Bell, and -hmm. the chihuahua moves its lips, and it goes, yo quiero Taco Bell, right? (laughs) Your horse can't speak with you like Mr. Ed, the way that we speak as humans, but Mm -hmm. your horse is speaking with you all the time. And one of the saddest things that I see is that horses get faulted or people call them stubborn because the horse looks okay on the outside, but people aren't picking up. Well, you know, that horse has three ribs out and it's uncomfortable. And at some point, it might throw you because you weren't listening. It was trying to tell you, but we will often think, oh, the horse is being stubborn. So when we come to this place of just being completely present, and also, too, Chloe, one of the biggest things, just the willingness, right? Just the willingness to show up and be present and say, hey, how are you feeling? You know, did you sleep okay last night? Did somebody kick you when you were in the pasture? You know, you feeling okay? You feeling comfortable? Just to even take 30 seconds, right, out of our agenda of what we, you know, we want to keep going to ask our horse, even if we just run our hands down their body, down their neck, down their backs and down their legs. Just to say, hey, is there anything you want to share with me that's bothering you that I need to be aware of? You know, or we need to go slower with, or do I, you know, do I need to get a chiropractor out? Or do you need any acupuncture? It makes such a world of difference in our riding. Because for so many people, we ride, like I said before, we ride on our horse. It's almost like we ride at our horse, not with them. Mm. Especially when we're in that state of agenda right? Because we're disconnected from our own body. So to me, not only does so much of this stuff make so much sense about how to have the best communication, but it's also about having the best relationship. I mean, a horse is one of the very, very, very few animals on this planet that we share an existence with that we'd even consider getting on their back. Like if you're married, like, would you be jumping on your husband's back, being like, ride me around, ride me around, right? You'd be like, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, get off me. Like, I have my own body, right? So it, it's just something that I have found that time and time again, not only people keep learning more about who these horses really are, people also keep learning, riders keep learning more about themselves and their own sensitivities. And that's where I think really the key, the biggest, you know, overall picture for all of these pieces is that we're learning to be more sensitive and we're learning to be more in tune. Mm. And that Mm. keeps all of us healthier and it keeps all of us safer. If you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look horsechats.com. How can we then send a very clear picture? What would you say, you know, what we'd like to do, what we want the horse to do? Just give us a bit more information about that. Sure. So one of the things I've learned over the years through animal communication, and, and I mean this like on a very, very literal, pragmatic level. I don't mean like woo-woo, like, oh, your horse likes the color blue. Mm-hmm. And they like when they give you sugar, you give them sugar. I mean, very practical, pragmatic, like, hey, really having a conversation to find out, you know, what's going on with their behavior, what's going on with their emotions. As humans, what we do is we think of something like, let's say we're like, okay, I want the dog to stay with me, right? So I want my dog, to, I want my horse to, to walk in a way that is comfortable for both of us. 
but we're already projecting a mental picture that the horse is not doing that. So the picture is backwards. What we really want, even though our words are saying, this is what I want. And what that does is it creates a funky intention kind of in our belly. We know something's not right, but we know it's right. Because we think we're saying the right thing, but the one thing we don't realize is horses are very literal when it comes to mental pictures. So if you're going to do something with your horse, if you're going to be training something new, if you're wanting something with your horse, train yourself to have a very crystal clear picture of what you do want. Okay. Like if I said to you, oh, Glenish, you're going on a trip. Hope you have a great trip. Travel safe. I say travel safe, but what does my mind do? My mind goes, oh my God, I hope they don't get into an accident. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Do you see how it's backwards? Like instead of me seeing you in your car, surrounded in golden light, getting to your destination with ease, right? Most of what we do is the backwards. So in order to work with our horses, if you want to send a really clear picture, really see, focus on what you do want. Horses are funny. They're really masters of manifestation. And they're really masters like of that book, The Secret, you know, yes. ask and it is given. Mm-hmm. So they literally, like as we go through these 10 steps and, and literally, I mean, maybe the first time you do it, it takes 10 minutes. This could end up taking you one to two minutes of time. And so what if it took you five minutes? You know what I mean? But your horse is literally training you to get into alignment in your inner energy field so that your communication is clear, so that your rides feel better, so that your relationship deepens authentically because you're doing things that your horse naturally does. And now they're going, oh, you get it? Like now you get what it's like to really be communicating in a way that, that I naturally do it. Mm. It just, you know, they, they, they literally, they, they, (sighs) right. Mm -hmm. Like they take a deep breath because they're like, Oh my God, this person now understands on a deeper level who I really am. So I don't have to be like guarding and protecting myself and sort of like waiting till it's over. I can actually enjoy all of it with my human as it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm just thinking about, you know, bringing it forward, and I love the way that you've just allowed these points to just flow on, you know, like breathing, Mm -hmm. bringing bringing that back in, reminding us of the breathing, reminding us how important it is. Yeah. And awareness, like listening to your horse, listening to their physical and emotional state. What have you got to say about that? So... This is where I find rides become magical because, you know, you just said the words, like you found that all of these points, basically they flow into each other, Mm. right? Yeah. So there's been a lot of scientific research done on what they're now calling flow states, right? Yes. To me, I personally just call it communion, Mm -hmm. you know, and being in sync with each other. And... You don't have to go out and have these like high level, crazy adrenaline producing kind of experiences to enter the flow state. A flow state from what I've learned of, you know, 25 years of studying Qigong and traditional Chinese medicine, Mm -hmm. it's like you can actually induce that flow state very easily just by following these 10 pieces. Right. And just by breathing and being grounded and being centered. And what starts to happen is the connection deepens, the level of trust deepens to the point where you literally start having like these heightened states of awareness of just feeling magic with your horse. Mm -hmm. You know, isn't it like the goal kind of of every rider, right? It's like on a tennis racket. It's like you want to hit that sweet spot. Yep. And so often I find in the equine world, we don't speak enough about these precursors, like this solid foundation before you ever even start to train or work with your horse. If we can get into this state, right? And it's very easy. I mean, we just talked about it in 20 plus minutes, 
but it's been a very easy, natural, flowing conversation because that's the energy that you want to actually bring to your horse. And so what it does is as we're staying relaxed in this state, it helps us listen better. Mm. It helps us hear our animals better. It helps us tune into their physical and emotional state. And I mean, think about if it was the reverse, right? And your horse just was like, okay, human, let's go. Come on, come out of your gate. Like, get over here. Go to yeah. this, go to this, right? In a lot of ways, we'd feel very, not like, we'd feel a little defensive. We'd, we'd be like, okay, this person says they love me, but their actions aren't actually matching their energy. Mm. And that's really what the horses are looking for. They're looking for this state of congruence. So if we're with them, they don't have, because this is a natural state for horses. You know what I mean? Being congruent with themselves, being congruent in their herd, um, being in sync with how they're feeling and that natural flow. Yep. And then all of a sudden we come along and we're like, hey, this, this, this isn't right. And we're not even paying attention to our own flow. So this is why I see that these are 10 things you must do before you start to train your horse really to have the best communication because this is what the horse has taught me is what they do, right? To have the yeah. best communication with each other. Yes. So when I bring information forth, it's never about what I think. And it's definitely never about what another human thinks. Mm-hmm. It's unless it's from the horse's perspective. But I really am, you know, the, what I share is directly from the horses to make things peaceful, to make riding really enjoyable. If you're going to train together, you know, it's not like sitting at your desk and trying to do work on a computer that is just not an inanimate kind of object, right? That doesn't have any feelings or thoughts or perspectives. Definitely, it's not breathing, right? So when we come to our horses, it's just really important that if we can come in this state and we can just practice it on a daily basis, not only does it massively help our horses in terms of our communication with them and their communication with us, but it so beautifully deepens our relationships, yeah. you know, and it really opens our awareness to seeing them for who they actually are. Mm-hmm. And if we can start our rides that way, or we can start our training that way, oh my God, you know, it's mm-hmm. like how much more beautiful can it just keep getting? Yeah. This is probably a good podcast just to keep there on your way to the barn. You know, if you're on your way to the stables, the barn or your adjustment, listen to this one and you might, you know, listen to it a few times to say, right, this is the state that I need to be be in before I even get there. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. And I'll tell you what, just from communicating with horses for so many years, I mean, they say, look, you think I, I, you think that I just know what my human is feeling when they get here to me and they're in front of me. They're like, I know what they're feeling 20 minutes away yeah. before they even come to the barn. Yeah. So yeah. just recognize too, you know, we are literally, Oprah had a sign in her dressing room and it said, you are responsible for the energy that you bring into this space. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So if we as equine professionals and people and practitioners and all that stuff, if we are constantly becoming more consciously aware, we're as responsible as anybody else for the energy that we bring to those horses. Mm -hmm. It will flip a lot of things for a lot of people and a lot of horses. Yeah. Yeah. And in a healthy, beautiful way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can't see the downside to this. (laughs) No. No, you're right. You're right. I don't think there is. Yeah. Alicia, through this chat, you talked about consistently, you know, your gratefulness and your appreciation of horses and how much you honour them. And I think mm-hmm. I think that message is, is one that sometimes we just need to, yeah, sit back and think about. It. We spend a lot of time riding and goal setting and everything else, but just to sit back and think yeah, that horses really are a flight animal and we should appreciate what they do. We should be grateful for the opportunity to do anything with them, whether we're on their back or not. But it's certainly something to think about. Yeah. So Alicia, thank you. Thank you for your message. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. And I I encourage it's like, let this be the new foundation. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, Mm. let this be the new way and the new paradigm that we 
think about our horses, that we perceive them. Like, let this be something that we do every single time, right? Of how we honor them. Let let us do this before every single ride. Yeah. Before anything we do with them. Like, if we can bring that energy. I mean, you know how good it feels when somebody appreciates you? No, for sure. Yeah, everyone wants that. You no, know? mm. right? But our horses do too. Because sometimes they don't know what they're doing wrong. Because cause we think they're doing something wrong and they're not. So I just, you know, listen to this as often as you want. Play it for your children. If your children are around horses, you know, like just encourage this as a new code of conduct of this is the way we connect and approach with a horse anytime and every time, you know, and when we realize, oh my God, I wasn't able to get out of my head or it was in my agenda, whatever, just take a deep breath. Yep. And just shift it, mm-hmm. you know, but like anything, it's just practice, right? Mm-hmm. So if we can just practice this every time and any time we're around our horses and we encourage our friends to do the same thing, think about the way the world changes, you know, for us and for them. Yeah, for sure. You've certainly given us a lot to think about. Yeah. So thank you. Alicia, what's the best way to contact you? If people would like to contact you, ask you a little bit more, get some information or advice. Sure. It's um, www.animalhealer, and that's H-E-E-L-E-R.com. So I, I do animal communication. I'm a holistic dog trainer. I work with people and their horses not as much with the fine points of riding. Like I couldn't teach you how to ride, you know, ride mm. dressage or English or, you know, but I, my specialty really, it's the connection. And when you're having a challenging time with your horse, whether it's a health issue or a behavior issue, or, you know, it might be that like coming to the end of their life issue, um, or even with relationships, you know, I've had many, many clients contact me before they take on a horse so we can connect with the horse and communicate and see, are you guys a really good fit? Yes. You know, what does the horse need? What are you willing to provide? And, um, you know, it, it's just sad because I see a lot of times horses, it's like people ride a horse up to a certain point and it's like, well, the horse can't do what I want it to do. And they let go of the horse. And I'm like, you know, even with this practice, it's just being much more mindful that, we're dealing with sentient conscious beings, you know, these were kids of parents just like us and they do have perspectives. You know, I felt like it breaks my heart sometimes with a lot of these school horses because they get love, love, love for what they're doing. And then it's like, Oh, well, we're on to the next. It's like, wait, well, what happened to the love? <laughs> like that's, that's just, that's not the way they do it in that, in their world, you know? Mm-hmm. So my hope is also that as people start paying more, attention and and relaxing in and softening into the sensitivities of their own bodies, that horses also will get that, you know, level of conscious respect that, you know, they give a lot to be with us and we've got to respect them throughout their whole life. You know, it's not like a car and you just trade it in. The car Mm -hmm. doesn't have thoughts and feelings and emotions, but our animals do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so hopefully this, paradigm and this just gentle flow of, of being with them and getting to know them on a, their insides as much as their outsides yeah. you know hopefully this will be a, a paradigm changing piece for horses throughout the world that's good okay those contact details again are horsechats.com slash alicia evans or, or be alicia evans too or just go to horsechats.com, search for Alicia, which is A-L-L-E-C-I-A, or just go to horsechats.com, search for Evans, and you'll find Alicia on that. And you'll be able to get a contact details as well. Thank you, Alicia. Hopefully we'll talk to you sometime again soon. Thank you so much, Glennis. Have a wonderful afternoon. You too. If you've enjoyed this chat, then please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you'd like any changes or recommendations for guests, then please contact us through horsechats.com. And while you're online, have a look at the government accredited courses at internationalhorsecollege.com. Registered Training Organisation 31352. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature. 
and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.